Good evening, and welcome to another one of my segments of A Verse Day Keeps Islam Away. Today I would like to discuss paganism. How paganism is the root of what Islam is based upon, and the parallelisms between pagan beliefs and Islamic beliefs today. Today I would like to talk about Al-Hajj. As you know, Al-Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam, those five pillars being as shahada as-salat, as-zakat, as and al-hajj. First of all, al-hajj takes place in a city called Mecca, Mecca al-Mukarrama. And just real quick to give you a real quick history about it, this is when Abraham had his son Ishmael through Hagar, uh, Hajar. So Abraham got rid of his son, got rid of Hagar who was actually his concubine, and they were sent to the desert. Now, the story has it that Ishmael was so thirsty, was so yearning for water, that Hagar was so desperate for her son's sake that she was trying to find water for him. And then she started running around seven times until she found water. What I don't understand is why would somebody run around seven times in a circle until they find water? Nevertheless, she found water out of this wonderful spring called Yanbu'a Zemzem, the spring of Zemzem, which is, till today, it springs holy water from it that God had sent down upon to Ishmael. Ismail, sorry. Now, the whole basis and the whole premises of a Hajj is, upon arrival to Mecca, there's something called al Kaaba. Al Kaaba is kind of comes from the Arabic root, Arabic word Al Kaab, Al Mukaab, which is a block, a cube. So Al Kaaba is really nothing more than this little rectangular, cube like building or structure, uh, which is extremely holy. And I will get to the fact as to why it is holy in just a little bit. However, um, Muslims are supposed to circumambulate around Al Kaaba seven times. Now, why is it so holy? What is so holy about the Kaaba? Within it is housed Al Hajar Al Aswad, the black stone. Now, the black stone, which nobody has seen by the way, it is inside this cube. And all you can see is a little window that you can see something black inside. But Al Hajar Al Aswad, this black stone, supposedly is a meteor that came upon from God and hit right in front of Adam's feet. Now, Adam eventually hid that black stone. And now this is where the story starts getting a little bit mixed up. Because Abraham, Brahim, was the one who uncovered that stone. And from that point on, they they reminisce, they do what Abraham did, and they worship that stone. Oh, I'm sorry, not worship that stone. They, um, <clears throat> they circumambulate around it. And every time they pass around the little window that has a stone showing, they must touch it and kiss it. And however, if you're not too close to it, since about every year about three million people make this pilgrimage, um, and you know, it's kind of small, confined, about three, four hundred people get trampled and died every year. Nevertheless, if you're not close enough to where you can touch it and kiss it, every time you pass around it, you must say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. All right, so now you have three million devout Muslims circumambulating this weird cubicle structure with that which you cannot see inside by the little black stone. Um, in essence, they are uh, practicing as to how to worship God, Allah. Because the Kaaba is supposed to represent Arsh Allah, the throne of God. So, here on earth, they take a little practice run as to how they will walk around the throne of God once they get up to Al Fardos. Now I know what every single one of you is thinking right now. Who built the Kaaba? Like for real dude. Who built it? Where did it come from? 
where did it originate? Al Kaaba actually existed and predated Islam by, hmm, I don't know, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand years. Al Kaaba is supposed to house 360 idols, and it was actually built for the god or the deity Hubal. Hubal being uh, the god of the moon, Ilah al Qamar. Now we still see remnants of Hubal even in the Quran today because Hubal is supposed to have had three daughters. The, these three daughters are Alat, Al Azza, and Al Manat. In Surah Al Najm, Al Quran, uh, Surah number 53, verse number 19 through uh, 21, where it talks about, you know, consider, have you then considered the Lat and the Azza? and Manat, the third of the last, for you the males and for him the females. I guess essentially in essence it's saying that for you as devout worshippers of Islam, of Allah, uh, you must worship the male of those four deities, which is Allah, and I'll go back to that in a little bit, and for him, for Allah, he shall worship the females, which are his three daughters, uh, Al-Azza, Al-Lat, Al-Manat. One of the most interesting hadiths that mentions Al-Hajj al is narrated uh, by Sahih al-Bukhari, book number 2, volume 26, hadith number 689, where it's narrating uh, Abu al-Hurairi. In the year past the last Hajj of the Prophet when Allah's apostle made Abu Bakr the leader of the pilgrims, Abu Bakr sent me in the company of the group of the people to make a public announcement. No pagan is allowed to perform Hajj after this year. And no naked person is allowed to perform Tawaf of the Kaaba. Now, when it's saying that no pagan shall do, perform the Tawaf, the circumambulation after this year, this clearly indicates that pagans up until that year had been performing al-tawaf, the circumambulation, the hajj, the turning around this little magical, mystical cube. Um, what's really interesting is how they ban people from doing it naked. So, people actually, not only did the pagans circumambulate and perform the tawaf to, around al-Kaaba, al but they used to do it naked, just like any other pagans. Now, do you remember how earlier I had mentioned that the story is a little confusing and doesn't really add up? Now, uh, after they performed the circumambulation and drank out of the well of the Zemzem and whatever, another event to do at this theme park that you go to is you go to this place, and I really forget what the um, process is called, I can look it up or I can just post it on the side in a little bit, but um, where you cast stones into nothingness. And this is to remind Muslims how Abraham, uh, Ibrahim, had cast the stones upon the devil, Rajam al-Shaytan. Now, this is where it really doesn't make sense. Why would Abraham have gone there to perform al-Hajj and to drink out of Nabaz Zamzam and to cast stones and Yarjum? A shaitan, the cast stones upon the devil. He banished his concubine and his bastard son. Why would he go there? Do you guys not even think about that? The last thing I want to mention that really ties in with paganism is something in the hadith. This is from Hadith Al Bukhari, Book 2, Volume 17, Hadith 128. Essentially, um, the followers of Muhammad were asking him for rain because it was not raining. So Muhammad went outside and did his little thing and it started raining. However, afterwards it was raining so hard that they asked him again and said, Hey Muhammad, it's raining so hard that we can't even walk home. So he went back outside, did his little thing and it stopped raining. And what is that? I think we have a video just coming right in. This is Muhammad performing his rain dance. <laughs> ha! 
That was wonderful. All right, I want to say thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you again later. Take care, and have a good evening.